Prior to groundbreaking, you must first verify that the site is free of any underground utility lines. Using a spade and shovel, begin by digging your hole. Keep in mind that the width of the hole should be no more than 12 to 14 inches wide. A tarp is nice to have to put dirt on while digging. This makes cleanup much easier, and at the end of the installation, there is less evidence of disturbance at the site. When the hole is complete, it should be at least 42 inches deep, although exceeding this depth by a couple of inches is acceptable. A grease security sleeve is used around the upper three feet of the steel rod to protect against ground movement associated with phenomena such as freezing and thawing at the ground surface. While the hole is being prepared for installation, preparation of the security sleeve should also be taking place. First, glue the end caps onto the security sleeve using multi-purpose PVC cement. Once the end caps are secured, the security sleeve is filled with a complete cartridge of food grade grease injected using a standard grease gun. Here we use Bel Ray No Tox Clear Grease because it is specially formulated to be non-toxic and environmentally safe. Keeping the sleeve vertical with the ground and using the rod support plywood as a base, pump the tube of grease in, occasionally tapping it against the plywood, using the force of gravity to evenly disperse the grease throughout the security sleeve. Once these initial site and monument preparations have been made, it is time to join the first sections of steel rod together in preparation for driving them into the ground. There are two important steps taken when threading together the sections of steel rod. First, all of the permanent threading components of the monument steel rod will be coated with Loctite Red 271. Then, once the two pieces are joined together, vice grips must be used to ensure the strength of the bond between them. Each section of rod comes with a threaded insert. Apply Loctite to half of this insert and screw the half with the Loctite back into the rod. The other half of the insert will be coated with Loctite when the next rod is ready to be installed. The new rod is screwed on and tightened with vice grips. There are two steps involved in driving the rods. First, they are manually driven into the ground using a sledgehammer. Then a jackhammer is used to complete the work. A drive point is attached to the first section of the rod using Loctite Red 271. Once the drive point is connected, this section of rod is carefully aligned in the center of the hole, and then the supporting plywood is lowered over the top. This support will help maintain the driving angle, keeping the rod vertical. A hardened steel drive pin is then threaded onto the top of the rod section above the plywood support. This pin will help guard the rod section from any potential damage that could be incurred while it is being driven into the ground. A manual drive adapter is placed over the top of the drive pin and is used to hold the rod in place during hammering. When manual driving is no longer productive, a gas-powered jackhammer is used. We used a 55-pound Cobra Combi jackhammer, which delivers 2,600 beats per minute to drive the rods to depth. We recommend utilizing the proprietary backpack or two-wheeled trolley to transport the jackhammer to the site. A power driving adapter is locked into the chuck of the jackhammer before use. The hardened steel drive pin is still used to protect the rods during this part of the process. Unless you have someone who can deadlift the jackhammer over their head, you'll need two people to lift and position it on top of each section of rod. We use the wooden box the Cobra Combi came in as a platform. No, this doesn't mean we refuse to work anymore. One of the main reasons to install a monument of this type is so that an accurate measurement of elevation can be made. To ensure that the monument is not moving due to surficial soil or geologic forces like freezing and thawing or shrinking and swelling, you'll want to drive the rod many tens of feet deep into the ground. For our project in northeastern national parks, we have typically driven rods to 80 feet or to substantial resistance. Substantial resistance is reached when it takes one minute to drive the rod one foot deeper into the ground when using a 55-pound jackhammer. At this site, we were able to drive the rod 80 feet into the ground. If refusal is reached due to contact with rock, the steel rod can be cut to the appropriate length using a reciprocating saw, and the edge is smoothed using a power grinder for the datum point. The top of the rod must be approximately five inches below the surface of the hole to allow for the attachment of the datum point. The datum point's threaded insert is attached using an epoxy, which is mixed with an epoxy hardener just prior to application. 
This mixture is also applied to the other half of the datum's insert before being screwed into the end of our final rod and fastened with vice grips. Now it's time to install the security sleeve. If you are working in a particularly sandy soil, you may need to dig out some of the dirt that has sloughed down into the hole. You should use a metal file to smooth the edges of the rod if necessary. After filing, the grease sleeve should slide down with relative ease over the rod. Once in place, you'll probably need to wipe away any excess grease. To finalize our monument, we now need to install the two foot long PVC collar around the security sleeve, making sure the PVC and access cover are near level to the surface of the ground. First, we backfill the hole with clean play sand, both inside and surrounding the PVC collar. This helps keep the collar centered and also helps keep the datum point directly under the access cover lid. Fill the remainder of the space along the outside of the PVC collar with wet concrete to permanently hold it in place. Clean any dirt off the remaining portion of the PVC. Using a UV resistant industrial strength adhesive such as UV 6800 made by Eclectic Products Inc., apply the adhesive to the outer edge of the access covers base and insert it into the PVC section. For this monument, we glued the aluminum access cover after pouring the concrete. However, if you want to ensure the access cover is set in the concrete, it is probably better to glue it onto the PVC before pouring the concrete into the hole. Make sure the concrete is well set around the edges of the PVC. If you installed the access cover with the lid on, like we did, you should check to make sure that no concrete or glue is preventing the lid from opening. Once the monument installation has been completed, make sure to remove your refuse, clean up your worksite, and bring all remaining materials back with you.